Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy, and today we're going to pick up where we left off from the last video and continue with our Apple chart analysis. Now today we're going to be focused on the Fibonacci tool and a little bit into gap fills and how I think that it corresponds into uh, supply and demand for a particular company. So as stated yesterday, I thought that this was a very bullish look going into earnings. Now, these earnings, uh, it says that they had a small beat in EPS and a small beat in revenue. Okay. Um, that does, just because the price goes up after earnings does not mean that the earnings were good. I have not looked at these Apple earnings. I intend to make a video on it to show you exactly what I'm looking for in earnings. But just because price goes up does not mean that the earnings were good. Um, but as I stated, this was a bullish look. Now I should say I'm not a financial advisor. Everything in this video contains merely my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. Now with this type of look going in the earnings, the reason why the earnings may not be good is because in my experience, it's very easy when you set a closing price right on top of resistance, it's very easy for bulls the bulls of the of Apple stock to take control of the price and gap it up over top of resistance. Now I'm sure there's some good stuff in that earnings report. Do not get me wrong, but um, I would not be entirely focused on that. We'll go more over this uh, in later videos, but now we're going to focus on Fibonacci tools and gap fills. So why I'm talking about this is Apple gaps up on these earnings. Now one day. I'm expecting this price to get filled in some way shape or form that price is going to get filled in some day now the gap that I'm focused on for this video we're not gonna go too much in the gap fills is this gap up and I'm gonna zoom in on it you can see on July 30th of 2020 Apple price gaps up from about $96 and this gap has never been filled now, a lot of people ask me, do you think that gap's going to get filled? One day, I think this gap's going to get filled, and that is why we're going to talk about Fibonacci retracements in this video, is we're going to use a Fib tool and understand how we think the price is going to get down there. Now, without going too much into depth with it, I'm going to briefly explain an Elliott wave structure, because this is what we're going to be matching up our Fibonacci retracement tool with. So... You can see this top diagram right here shows a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, followed with an A, B, C. Now inside this one wave, you have a five wave structure, and inside this five wave structure, you have a multiple of different structures. You have a, a five wave structure with an A, B, C, a five wave structure with an A, B, C, a five wave structure with an A, B, C, or basically three five wave structures and two ABC structures inside of this. So how am I going to match this up with my Fibonacci tool? So I'm very focused on this double top. Let me zoom in for it. I'm focused on this double top right here. This is not a very bullish look. This is as bearish as it gets. And what may, what's the cherry on top is I'm going to put a horizontal line right there. And I'm going to put a horizontal line right at the all-time high price. Now you can see this double top forms in as a high, a lower high. That is the cherry on top. This is not this is not a bullish look by any means. Any means. And there is a hard sell off off of this. I've already looked at it. I know it's 28%, but I'm going to show you guys Apple's price dropped 28% over over this time period. Now that is no slouch of a fall for Apple. Now, how am I going to use my Fibonacci tool? And we're just going to get rid of all the lines because I'm not I'm not focused on any support resistance or any of that stuff right now. I'm focused on how is the price. We will keep our gap fill at 96 bucks roughly, right around there. We'll lower that because it was right around that 96 flat. Okay, we'll just leave it right there. So how am I going to use this Fibonacci retracement tool? I know you guys are waiting. I'm just going to simply go from top of the move bottom of the move now this in a sense is a 
lot of different structures inside of this. I should have done that first. You can see from what I see right here, I see a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, followed by an A, B, C, a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, followed by an A, B, C, a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, followed by an A, B, C. Now, we actually end up pushing higher than this. Now, a lot of people could have been expecting just a simple A, B, C, and then sell off. Now, there is some congestion in here. Now, I'm going to go to a four hour chart, and we're going to look at this congestion. Now, I can see after we get a 1, 2, 3, you see a short term A, B, C, and we get bought up. So, there was some indecision here. There were sellers thinking that, okay, the price is set after an A, B, C retracement. We're going to be ready for a five a five wave structure to the downside so there was indecision right here so going off of that indecision you actually see a clear five wave structure one two three four five so off of this indecision we it just stays off of this short term trend line I'll put this trend line in just like that. Now you can see there was just a five wave structure. This trend line held bullish. Now, is it going to remain bullish like that? I do not know. <clears throat> but we're going to put our Fibonacci retracement tool back up there. And what am I focused with? So I can see on this fall, we had a, we have our fifth wave come in right here. And then we have a ABC. Now I'm going to switch it back to a day chart. I know I keep I keep missing some information so I can see on my wave 5 we have a 1 2 3 4 5 if I take the structure from my wave 5 where does this ABC retracement go to so I'll take the top of the wave the top of the move to the bottom of the move so I went from right here the top of my wave 5 to the bottom of my wave 5 now I could even put that bottom right here because this is actually where the wave 5 ends and you can see this gets rejected at the 702. If I were to go down to this all-time bottom wick, the candle was right on that 702 retracement. Now, we end up getting off of that, that 702 retracement by falling with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wave structure. That is exactly what I'm looking for and stuff like that. So, how am I going to determine how the price of Apple is going to get the 96 bucks? We're going to take top of the move, bottom of the move. Here's our 702 retracement. This, all these wave structures inside here, I look at it as just a wave one. That is a wave one. So I'm more focused on this drop right here. This is what I think that initial drop was. Now I think the 702 retracement is just this retracement right here. So this is going to be a wave one. Here is my wave two. Now, I already know this is a 28% drop. Now, I can calculate from my retracement, 28% is going to be the same length wave. 28% puts me right there at $118. Now, I'm going to mark that in. 118 bucks right there. So there is a potential ABC correction. Now, I'm also going to put a line, a horizontal line, right on that. Now, look at this support that we have built up off of this line. Now, if I were to zoom in over here, I can also see here is a gap fill, here is a gap fill. This is a clear buying window. Now, it just so happens that this buying window is from $116 to $120 right where let's let's go pull up that everything money where i'm first getting interested in apple stock we'll go to history we'll look up apple that 120 is exactly where i want to be interested in the stock is that a coincidence i you know i do not know now what is possible now back to the chart now what is possible and what i've seen multiple times i have multiple examples of this and i will be showing those examples is if this is a one two three and we get the price here you're going to have gap fill buyers you're going to have buyers off of this support now what is potential that could happen this could be a wave four to back test the bottom of wave one so now what i can do if i think that this is going to be a one two three four five wave structure to the downside 
I can take that 28% fall from the bottom of wave one, and I can anticipate that for a a brief estimate of how the price is going to drop. And I'm going to say at the price at this point in time, there's going to be more sellers and buyers, and I could potentially look for a 28% drop from the top of my wave four. So if I were to do a 28% drop, that puts me at a price of around $93. Now I can't make that price up. Now, what's interesting about $93 is that is below my gap. Oh, my gap fill went, went away. Look at this gap fill right there. Now, I do not have a crystal ball. For all I know, all of this is baloney, and none of this is going to happen. But if this transpires like this, and we get a five-wave structure down to this gap fill, I will buy this gap fill if we get a look like this. I will probably be buying it from 105 down to that gap fill as well, because that is where I'm interested in the price of Apple. But... Uh, Man, this video went a little bit longer than I anticipated, but that uh, gives you a brief example of how I use a Fibonacci tool and how I can estimate how the price can potentially fall to something. But isn't it crazy how it lines up that way? I'm very focused on this $96 gap, and this five-wave structure puts me at $93. Is that a coincidence? You know, I don't know. I... It, it, it's all crazy to me too, but that is going to wrap this video up. I hope you guys enjoy the content, and we will see you on the next video.